concert, I guess we can call it that. Uh, the theme of this concert is going to be just what you hear. <laughs> it's all about God and what God wants to do. How many of you sometimes think that this journey called life is a tough one? It seems like we're always going upward, always going upward against the wind. But let me tell you something, and you've heard it said that if the mountain were smooth, you couldn't climb it. So sometimes the mountain may seem rough, but just keep on climbing, because God has something good in store for you. I'm climbing up, up the rough side of the mountain, climbing up to Zion to see my Lord. I'm climbing up, up the rough side of the mountain, climbing up to Zion to see my Lord. I'm climbing up, up the rough side of the mountain, climbing up to Zion to see my Lord. I'm climbing up. Up the rough side of the mountain, climbing up to Zion to see my Lord. Brothers, won't you listen? Oh, yes. Brothers, won't you listen? Oh, yes. Brothers, won't you listen? Oh, yes. I'm climbing up to Zion to see my Lord. I'm climbing up. Up the rough side of the mountain, climbing up to Zion to see my Lord. I'm climbing up, up the rough side of the mountain, climbing up to Zion to see my Lord. Sisters, won't you listen? Oh, yes. Sisters, won't you listen? Oh, yes. Sisters, won't you listen? Oh, yes. I'm climbing up to Zion. To see my Lord, I'm climbing up, up the rough side of the mountain, climbing up to Zion to see my Lord. I'm climbing up, up the rough side of the mountain, climbing up to Zion to see my Lord. See the gates of yonder, oh yes, see the gates of yonder. I'm climbing up to Zion, climbing up to Zion, climbing up to Zion, climbing up to Zion to see my Zion is a place that is going to be the sweet by and by. I'm going to invite my brother Matt to come up and he's going to strum the keys and allow me to sing with him. I'm looking forward to this sweet by and by. I'll get the words myself. Yeah, well, I'll hold the mic in between the two of us unless we can use the stand. Could we please?
lay dying on a cross and he knew all along that he had done wrong and for his sin he must die but as he turned he saw the Christ with his head hanging down. He knew he had found the one who could save his soul. So he cried, remember me when you come into your kingdom. said, have no fear, son, you shall be with me eternally. It is for you that 
such a difference in our world, doesn't it? When the sun in the sky shines on you, you feel warm and fuzzy and all happy. But when the sun, Jesus, shines in our lives, we shall feel the same way. So allow his sun, Jesus, to shine through our lives. Sunshine. Have you ever seen a garden when the sun is shining bright? Flowers lift their heads up to the sun for precious warmth and light. Flowers bloom so lovely when the Father up above just lets his sun shine. On a hillside in a meadow, there's a tree that stands alone. Though its limbs are strong, you'll always see it reaching for a sun. And a God with all his power knows that every tree and flower needs lots of sunshine. And if God didn't let his sun shine, every tree would surely die without it. The birds would never fly, every flower. sunshine to survive and when God lets his sunshine nature pains are pretty seen when the sun shines everything will turn out fine nature's living or it's dying depends on whether God will let his sun shine 
Have you ever seen a man who is walking in God's light? Jesus Christ has made things better since he's came into his life. He's seeing better days since someone along the way just let God's sun shine. Have you ever seen a man try to make it on his own? He will fall no matter how he tries, for to him Christ must be shown. And God looks down with cheerful eyes, wonders why we won't let his sun shine. And if we don't let God's sun shine, many souls would surely die without him. There's no meaning to our lives, let him shine out. Truly you must realize that mankind needs God's sunshine to survive. And when we let God's sunshine, the horizon's yours and mine. When the sun shines, everything will turn out fine. Mankind's living or is dying depends on whether we will let God's sun shine. Mankind's living or is dying depends on whether we will let God's sun shine. three things. Yeah, she's singing with me. <laughs> there are only really three things that help to keep, keep the Christian experience exciting. Do you know what they are? Three things. One, study the Word, as the pastor is doing with us, showing us from the Word what God says. Study the Word. Secondly, it's pray. We uplift our hearts to God. He speaks to us. Helps to keep our Christian experience strong. And you know what the third thing is? Share, share, share. Witness, share the good news with others. You know, there's something about sharing. I don't see any really young people here. Let me see, who's a, a teenager? Is there a teenage boy here? Oh, okay, okay, you raise your hand. I think you're a little older than that, Kara, but... Uh, we think we can take in, take in, take in, and never let out, let out, let out. Try holding your breath. No matter how long you think you can hold it, at some point God will knock you out so you'll start breathing again. Try drinking, drinking, drinking lots of water all day long. Can you keep it in? Eating, can you keep it in? You get sick. The same thing happens in the Christian experience, my friends. We take in, we listen to studies, we listen to prophet seminars, we read our Bibles, we hear all the good news, and then we keep it here. And that hurts our Christian experience. We want to share the good news. Because you know why we want to do that? Because Jesus is coming again soon. And because he's coming again soon, I want to be ready. I want to be ready for him. I want my life to be one that says, Jesus, when you come, please take me home with you. I want to be ready. Imagine how the disciples must have felt as they watched Jesus being taken up into the skies. How disappointed they must have felt when they were given a special promise, a promise that Jesus is going to keep soon, coming again. Why stand ye gazing there up into the sky? Be not discouraged, for we have brought good news. This same Jesus, whom we do
destiny. Lord, I humble myself to Thee. Lord, I want to see your face. Just help me to be strong. I know you'll come again. It won't be very long. He is coming again. He is coming. blessing to hear this deep voice you know yes Wendell you have inspired me to deepen my voice you know <laughs> I am going to try to practice okay, okay sure. I'm gonna try to practice and I um, I just want to thank you on behalf of Duncan community here for coming all the way uh, from Ontario from Windsor you came from the southernmost city of Canada and um, and you thought that we were going to be much warmer than Windsor, yes. but yeah. somehow I don't know how that happened. Yeah. Right. But on behalf of us, I really want to tell you, we, have, uh, we want you to remember us too. We want you to go back to Ontario and just don't tell them about the weather, just tell them how warm the people are, okay? Amen. Amen. And having said that, we have a special gift for you, okay? So uh, if you can just please come up here, right there, Wendell, right there, you know, uh, so that we, there's more space. <laughs> So we don't uh, get tangled with all the cables. I'm gonna invite Matthew. Matthew is gonna come and gonna give you something on behalf on behalf of Duncan, okay? And he's gonna tell us what it is, because uh, you know this is Duncan. I don't know if you heard of Duncan before, but you're gonna you're gonna remember Duncan. <laughs> well, Wendell, we are so blessed to have you here, and we're so glad you came. And I know uh, uh, it, it, to to Vancouver Island as a network, so. Yeah. And I know Victoria is a pretty big place here, and you know, uh, it could be, I could see where it could dominate your thoughts. But coming to a place like Duncan, you know, look at the crowd. We are, we are a blessed people here living in the Couch and Valley, and it's just one small part of Vancouver Island. Um, I just want you to know that I know that each person here has been touched by your song, and, and especially by, uh, you know, the teaching that you gave us. It was really well received. Uh, at church, and uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I, I, I got a little gist that you might be heading back this way sometime. That's and our, experience. and our gift to you um, tonight is a is a photo journal book of Vancouver Island, oh, nice. along with the card by uh, that uh, made by uh, it has a, it's an art print card by one of our very famous art artists, Sir E. J. Hughes. He's okay. renowned uh, worldwide. Very nice. And uh, you want to just keep that card? I know. Yes, that's right. Protect that, as we have. And uh, and I and I, as you look through the Bank of Island magazine or photo essay, you're going to find that uh, there's some there in of Couch and Valley, and of course there will be a little bit about Victoria. Okay. But the whole island is pretty much covered. Okay. Gotcha. And uh, so when you come again, 
Oh, got it. You'll make sure you come to Duncan. Of course, you That's can right. use it as your center of travel. Sure. But then you can travel for the whole <laughs> island from here. So well, you'll be always welcome here. Thank you. And we also have a, a little honorarium for you. We appreciate so much. Thank you. The gift that God has placed in you. Thank you for Thank coming. You. My privilege. The Lord bless and keep you Thank as you travel again. Thank you. Okay, friends, believe it or not, time is going by very quickly. And uh, as you know, we've uh, this is the third day of the seminar. The seminar will continue, but not tomorrow. If you come tomorrow, then you probably heard some other language, okay? Uh, some Something else. But there's nothing tomorrow here. And there is nothing on Tuesday. So please do not come on Monday or Tuesday. But we will continue on Wednesday night and Thursday night. And I just want to remind you that on Wednesday night, we're going to discuss one topic that I believe came as a request from several people here, the topic about suffering. Why is there suffering? And if there is God, then why is there suffering in the world? We are going to address this topic. Now, what about the topic about life after death? You know, this is the ultimate prophecy that the Bible speaks to us about what happens to us when human beings pass away. Um, is this the end of all things? We die and there is nothing else after that? Uh, what does the Bible say? And as you know, I've mentioned to you, there's a lot of confusion seems to be there, even in the Christian world, in terms of what happens after you die. You know, from church to church, and a lot of people are saying, if there is one God, then why are there so many beliefs? Well, for example, even when you talk about baptism, you know, you know some churches baptize by sprinkling, sometimes other churches baptized by immersion. And, um, and so what is the biblical way of baptism? Is there several way of baptisms? You know, we're gonna, we're gonna discuss and we're gonna try to clarify some of the misunderstandings that are out there in the community because I believe that God has always been the same before, yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. The Bible actually says that I'm the Alpha and Omega. I do not change, you know, we people, we do change. I don't know if you noticed, but from the 80s to 2017, there's a lot of changes that has taken place in the community. Even the way we dress, you know, we change. But the Bible says that God is, God doesn't change. God is someone that is the most stable, solid entity of, out there in, in the universe and even here with us. So please, as you come on Wednesday, let's talk about suffering and why is there suffering. And then we'll talk about life after death on Thursday. And you cannot miss this night because... Remember, you will, I don't know, this is a very rare opportunity to hear about life after death from someone who comes from the land of the Dracula, and that is me, absolutely. <laughs> you better you better believe it, you know, I come from there. And we're going to talk about ghosts. We're going to talk about what does the Bible say about ghosts and the, the supernatural phenomena that you see on television where people go to these places and they suddenly the temperature goes down and everybody says, oh look, oh there, there's something here. What is it? When what does the Bible say? Do, are there ghosts? Are there ghosts walking around? And you know, are they? Uh, can they hurt us? You know, what does the Bible say? So that is, you cannot miss Thursday. So, but on Wednesday is the suffering. So, uh, we'll see you then, absolutely tomorrow at seven o'clock. Yes? No. No. Okay, you've been listening. Okay, very good. All right. I want to uh, transition into the, just a humorous story. One day. Um, a pastor was preaching a, um, a sermon and one day he saw that people were falling asleep and he got really disappointed you know he's preaching a sermon and uh, and there's a person falling asleep so he started to speak quieter and quieter and then he suddenly said if you are a sinner get up and of course the person that was really asleep he suddenly startled and he heard the something so he he got up he heard the, the got up get up part part so suddenly he got up everybody started laughing and so the pastor came and he said to him, so have you learned your lesson? And the man kind of confused, he said, he looked around, he says, pastor, I have no idea what you're talking, but there is two of us that are standing here in this room, okay? <laughs> so everybody started laughing again because there's the two sinners right there, the pastor and this man. Folks, I am glad that you are here with us. We have a wonderful topic. And you know what? Just because you, some of you have already submitted prayer requests, I would like just to have a brief word of prayer before we begin. Dearly Father, Lord, as we start this Bible study on the left behind, I just want you to please be with us here and open our minds so that we can understand. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
So, left behind. I'm going to go straight and I'm going to try to fly very quickly through this. Uh, hopefully you have the study guide. If you do not have the study guide, just raise your hand and someone will give you the study guide. We have one hand at the back. Yes, and there is another one right here in the third row. Right here on the left there is another one and we are bringing that study guide to you. Just please uh, keep your hands raised and someone is going to bring you the study guide. Yes. Right there, Arlene, right there. Please raise your hand so we can see you right here, right there. There's the hand. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. So this study guide will help you to follow the presentation and uh, you can also go back at home and check to make sure that whatever you learn here is in harmony with the Bible because this is the Bible seminar. And so the Bible reveals the end of the world. We've covered that topic. And you know what? I think I am completely on the wrong slideshow. I cannot believe this. So I'm going to switch this. This happens once in a while. This happens. This is what happens when you drive over Malahat. You know, this is, I tell you, this is what happens when you drive over Malahat. So I'm going to quickly try to find this presentation. I cannot believe this. You know, I was just talking about ghosts and suddenly my presentation disappears. You know, this is, this is not good, right? So uh, we're going to try to find, uh, we're going to try to find the presentation here and there it is there it is left behind powerpoint and uh, i hope that the presentation was safe because we made some changes and uh, we're starting right here truth about the secret rapture there it is okay my apologies for this and uh, today i want to tell you that many christian preachers teach that the true christians will suddenly disappear prior to the Great Tribulation. How many of you heard of that? All right, suddenly you will disappear before the Great Tribulation and only unbelievers will endure the Great Tribulation and sometimes, um, of course, the third point is that they will also be given a second chance to repent, even those unbelievers, okay? So only unbelievers will endure the Great Tribulation and of course it is based on the book that sold millions of copies and even Hollywood invested the money in producing at least two movies based on this book called Left Behind. And of course we want to ask the question, what does the Bible say about tribulation? Is God going to rapture only the faithful Christians and take them to heaven so that they escape the tribulation? So I'm going to go straight to the Bible and John chapter 16 verse 33 says the following. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. And in the world you will have no tribulation. When you become Christian, life is going to be so nice and easy. <laughs> is this what the Bible says? You know, friends, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but the Bible actually says if you stand up for God, you will have tribulation. It is almost a guarantee if you stand up for God, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Now, I like the Bible because it says, be of good cheer, even as you go through tribulation. That's the difference between someone who believes in God and someone who doesn't. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. You're right, that's the promise. But I'm going to go to another verse, Acts chapter 14, 22. It says, we must, ah, this, I'm afraid of this, we must. You know, I don't like, I don't like to suffer, all right? I don't. Sometimes I think I suffered enough, okay? I suffered enough that at the age of 39, that's how old I am. And some of you are a little bit surprised because I do look older than 39. At least some people tell me I look much older. Matthew says, no, no, Matthew, that's why I like you, you see? Because you're my friend, you're saying, yes, you look, you, you look younger. But, you know, I, sometimes I feel like I have suffered enough. I mean, I suffered back home, and, and then even when I came to Canada, even here, I realized there's suffering. But the Bible says we must through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. You see, when we read the Bible, I never find a verse where God says, because you're a good Christian, you're going to escape all the tribulations. I do not find that kind of Bible verse. As a matter of fact, I want you to know that there is a lot of Christian preachers. And, um, and don't get me wrong, because I'm not even worthy. You know, I'm, I don't want to pass any judgment, but I just know that sometimes... A lot of sermons that you hear today is that God is going to give you a better job and you deserve a better job. 
And God is going to bless you with a better car. Amen. Amen. You know, and people love to hear these kind of messages. I mean, who would, who would like to go to a church that really tells you that you deserve better life? And every single weekend, the preacher says, you deserve better. You deserve a better job. You deserve a better salary. And you know, it all sounds good, and I'm sure that there is a place for that. Sometimes we need to hear, we need to know that God <clears throat> has a potential in us that we can definitely succeed in life. But you know what? Then you think of someone like Mother Teresa, who did not have the fancy car, and who did not have a fancy job, and yet, and yet she has influenced many people's lives. And, uh, and many people say who know her that she lived quite a satisfied life by just helping others. And so we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom. Revelation chapter 1 verse 9 says, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was on the island that is called Vancouver Island for the word of God. No, that's not what it says. It says on Patmos, okay? This was like a jail. You know, this, uh, this is amazing because he says, I am the companion in the tribulation. You see, this is what the Bible speaks of tribulation. Not something to be uh, to avoid, uh, but to the contrary, many Christians were not afraid to go through the tribulation. Not asking God to remove tribulation, but simply asking God to give strength to go through the storm. Listen to this one. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9 says, I know your works. And this is about the church of Smyrna. This is another prophecy. Unfortunately, we don't have time to cover this prophecy. But the book of Revelation literally outlined the entire history of the Christian church. And it says, the church of Smyrna, which literally covers the period of about 100 to 300 years after Christ, that was the persecuted church. And it says here, I know your works, church of Smyrna, you have tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. Yeah. Oh, friends, I want to give you a little story. You know, I meet a lot of immigrants in Canada who say, when I lived back home, I had nothing and I was so happy. Mm. Now I am in Canada, I have everything and I am not happy. Have you met people like that? Yeah. Yeah. We had nothing, but we were happy. And now we are here, we have everything. We have every single toy. We have two, three vehicles and we have a, a house mortgage. At least it's uh, my house, but I am not happy. You know, because the Bible says that sometimes we forget that where the true wealth is. The true wealth is not in materialism. And that's why the Bible says it's important that we place our attention and worship on things that are eternal, right. not temporary. But you know, many of us literally worship our houses and cars. And that's why we're so unhappy. Did you know that Canada is one of the top countries for depression? Okay. So we, many of us are very depressed. And why do you think we're so depressed? Because I have a feeling that many of us here in this society, we live for the things of this world. You know, we live for the new car. We live for the new house. And, but that is temporary, and we are never satisfied. That's why even James Bond had a movie, This World is Not Enough. You know, you can buy a new car, but tomorrow that car is nothing. You have to buy a new one. And then a new one. So it doesn't matter. But don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with a new car. But the car can become what a symbol of this craving and worship. Oh, wow, you know. So tribulation, you can, be, you can have nothing, but you can be rich with God. Yes, amen. I don't know, you know, this is hard, you know. I don't know if you had a chance to travel, but I, I tell you, many people say that we're in the top three most, the richest people in the world. You know, if you, have, if you drive a car, you're in the, you're in the top 5% of the world's most richest people. All right? 5%. And you know, the early Christians, when they died, horrible deaths, and I just want to show you this picture uh, that comes from the book of the ancient historian by the name of Eusebius. Of course, this picture was just uh, produced by a modern artist, but one of the most ancient Christian historians by the name of Eusebius, he described the horrible ordeal of the Smyrna church. And you can see that early Christians, they died, they went through the tribulation, they did not escape the tribulation, and uh, as a result of this, um, the secular author actually says that that's why Christian church was growing. Because when Christians died, many of them died with, by singing. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily crying, but by singing. And people were inspired, those pagan Romans, when they saw Christians 
dying with a smile on their face and singing, something changed in their heart, you know? And so even today, Matthew 24, 13 says, but those who endure to the end will be saved. All right, that's what the Bible says. Not those who escape. Oh, I would love, I would love sometimes for God to make me escape some of my troubles, you know? Do you, do you feel like that sometimes? You know, and sometimes I think that, you know, other people live good, but why do I have to suffer? You know, other people don't have the credit card debt, but so why do I have to suffer, right? Why does my car have to break down? Even today, even today, friends, I was coming to Duncan, and we are in Victoria, and we had a memorial service just right before, before we came here. And uh, I drive my old van. It's like 18 years old, but it still, it still drives well. And I'm, everything was going well, but suddenly my tire goes flat, okay? Right in Victoria, right on Pandora and Vancouver. And I'm saying, no way, okay, I have to get to Duncan. I, I, why is this happening to me? Uh, sometimes I like to complain, but you know what the Bible says? In Matthew 24, it says, for then there will be great distress. Please write these two words down. Every time you see a yellow circle, that's the key to answer to your study guide. For then there will be great distress, unequal from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equal again. So the Bible says that there are some tough times that are coming. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes, unfortunately, we Christians, we, love, we like to avoid this topic. Because we only like to, to talk about the good things that make us feel good. Uh, you know, we like to talk about the better job, the better car. And we like to also listen to preachers. I am afraid that that's the reality. We like to listen to preachers who say that you will avoid the distress. Mm -hmm. You will avoid the persecutions. You will avoid the great tribulation. But then it says, if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. That's what the Bible says. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. As you can see, the Bible says that the, the elect ones will not disappear, but the days of trouble will be shortened. Oh, friends, I tell you... I honestly believe, I honestly believe, and I'm going to tell you this, that the days of tribulations are already starting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this, but in the last few years, more Christians died than in probably in the last few hundred years. In just the last few years, many Christians have been massacred, literally. There are entire countries that soon will no longer have any Christian presence. Yeah, I'm sure you've been watching the news and some of the horrible images of where entire mobs would grab Christians and just kill them. You know, this is what's happening around the world. Many of these Christians are fleeing countries, and uh, I'm not even going to name those countries because sometimes, you know, people may say that I'm trying to present some political view, but the truth of the matter is that today Christians are, are being persecuted all around the world, and not just in the Middle East somewhere, but I believe that there is persecution that is starting even in North America of Christian beliefs. Because if you say something that is biblical, suddenly people consider you that you are not part of the society, you know. Even though, as I, as, as I mentioned to you, even though Canada, even in the national anthem, says, God keep our land. You see, many Christians, and as I look at these terrible pictures of Christians leaving many countries, uh, the Bible, I think of the Bible verse that says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. And you know, this is my prayer also for my family. You know, I have little two boys growing up, and I know that they're gonna grow up, grow up in a wonderful country of peace. At the same time, I am praying that God will not protect them from the difficulties, but that he will protect them from the evil one. Because you know, the evil one can get us even in the, in the time of peace. Discouragement, depression, when we start to live for ourselves, that's when the, the evil one can get us. It's not the persecution that we should be afraid of. As a matter of fact, I want to tell you something. Look at me. You see me? I'm not a superman, okay? I'm not. As a matter of fact, I'm a little bit overweight. I, I, I can improve my life in many ways. But I have lived through persecution back in the former Soviet Union. I do remember that as Christians, we had to hide if when we were worshiping God. Because the KGB officers would sometimes... Uh, try to uh, investigate of where are the churches that are meeting because Christianity was illegal in many ways. Many pastors and priests ended up in prisons for their faith. And I do remember that when we worshiped, sometimes we would cover windows to make sure that there's no light and we would sing hymns quietly. We would say, sing hymn like, How Great Thou Art, 
we would sing it quietly. Mm. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, I was only two, three, four years old. I will never forget those days. And you know, I believe that today my faith is strong in God because of those tribulations that I have gone through back in the former Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to know, I'm sorry that I will disappoint you because I don't think you will hear this on television from any particular Christian channel where a pastor or a preacher will say to you, do not be afraid to go through tribulation. Do not be afraid. Because they actually that will strengthen your faith. And the Bible actually says we can rejoice too when we run into tribulations and trials. For we know that they are good for us. They help us learn to endure. You know, it's unbelievable and when I think about this. And I want to tell you something. You, when you look at me, you probably look at me and some, somebody actually mentioned to me, not in Duncan, but when I was conducting a seminar, they said, why are you wearing a suit? Do you think you're better than us? Well, what's wrong with you? Well, you know, to be honest with you, I am, first of all, I'm from Europe and we wear suits even to McDonald's. I mean, that's how we are. I actually don't really have anything else. I think I have one pair of jeans and uh, I'm still kind of European in my mindset, you know. I have to wear a suit, all right? But I want you to know, sometimes, yes, it can be very discouraging. You look at someone and you say, well, his life is, is good. But I want you to know, I come actually from a lot of tribulations in my life. You know, my father died of cancer at a young age. You know, I have, I have lost many of my family members. Uh, even my cousins who are the same age as me are no longer alive. And sometimes I feel like, wow, God, how much longer do I have to suffer? How much longer do I have to go through the tribulations of seeing my relatives, you know? And, you know, when my mother is suffering, you know, it, it really affects you as well. Yeah. Because when your loved one is suffering, it affects you and your heart is in pain. And you go through the tribulations sometimes more than even some psychologists say that when one of your family members is sick or diagnosed with a disease, sometimes the person that may not be sick is going through the same pain, all right? So we all go through tri tribulations and endurance, <laughs> develop strength. It's hard to believe it, but you know, that's, that's the reality. When you go through difficulties, the Bible says rejoice because that develops strength of character in us. And character strengthens our confident expectation of salvation. All right, so this is what the Bible says. Okay, the Bible says do not be afraid of tribulation. And when tribulation comes, we will go through it just like Israel went through all the plagues of Egypt. Do you remember? Mm. All the plagues. But one thing that they were able to survive was when they marked their doorposts with the blood of the Lamb, which mm. symbolized Jesus Christ. Yeah. And you know, the Bible says when the second coming will come, uh, not another question we have, because you know, the secret rapture and the left behind, they say that Jesus is going to capture some people, take them to heaven, so they escape the tribulation, and then, of course, Jesus will come very quietly, okay? You, do you remember that from the movie? He will come so quietly that people will not even see him. That is what a lot of, a lot of preachers are teaching. But is that biblical, okay? We're going to look at this. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Now, this is exciting, okay? This is what it says. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief, thief in, the in the night. Now, let me tell you something. I know in Canada you don't experience this. But when the thief comes, <laughs> comes at night, is he loud? No, it's, it's quiet, right? You see, many people read this verse and they say, well, see, Jesus will come quietly. But let's continue to read the same verse, okay? So as we continue to read the same verse, what does it say? He will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a very, very quiet noise. No, it says he will come with a great noise. And the elements will melt with fervent heat, both the earth and the works that are in, in it will be burnt up. Okay, this is what the Bible says. So the sentence that says he will come as a thief in the night doesn't mean that he will come quietly, but it means that he will come how? Unexpectedly. Unexpectedly. That's, that's what this verse is saying, okay? Because we can see that there's going to be great noise. Furthermore, uh, when Jesus was taken uh, uh, up to heaven back in the New Testament, uh, his disciples were looking up, and uh, they will say to you, he actually says, look here, or look there. Um, this is what Jesus told them, you know, he says, in the last days, and we, if you came here last night, you saw that there is a Russian Jesus, there is Spanish Jesus, there's all kinds of false Christs around the world. And you saw the videos, you saw the Russian Jesus and the Spanish, 
And G Jesus actually says here that in the last days, there will be many false Christs who will, and some people will say, hey, uh, he is in the desert, go and see him. And what does the Bible say? Should we go there? Well, the Bible says, for as the lightning that flashes out from, of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. So when the lightning, uh, uh, you know, strikes, folks, I know that this is not something secret. It is visible, right? And the Bible actually says, Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, it says, Behold, he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him. Please write these words down. Every eye will see him. So it's not going to be a quiet event. It's not going to be a secret event. According to the Bible, this is going to be a worldwide event. And the book of Acts actually continues. You see, I'm going through many verses here. I hope I'm not going too fast. So some of you may write the three words, every eye will see him. Okay, we're back to the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 9. Now this is the moment when Jesus was going up to heaven and this is what happened. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Okay, so I want you to imagine that you're there with the disciples of Jesus 2,000 years ago and you can see that the cloud is taking him up. And then... And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stu stood by them in white apparel, and who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? And uh, then they said, This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in what? Like. In like manner as you saw him go into heaven. In other words, Jesus is going to come in the same way. He's going to come down from heaven, not secretly so that no one knows, but he's going to come in a very loud noise that and every eye will see him. And then the book of Luke chapter 21 says, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So I, I just, uh, I cannot even imagine what is, that is going to look like. But some artists are, are, are very creative, so this is one of the creations of when, how the artists think of how Jesus is going to be coming down. Now, I'm not sure that every angel is going to be blonde uh, or having blonde hair and blue eyes. I'm not sure about that, okay? Um, but uh, um, I, I'm not sure what necessarily angels, what kind of eyes they have had, but I do know that angels are just awesome beings. And yes, they are bright with light. And so Christ's second coming is going to be a visible event. I want you to write this down. It's going to be a visible event, according to the Bible. Jesus will not come back alone. So it's not a quiet event. Okay, it's going to be loud. Uh, when the Son of Man comes in His glory, the Bible says, and all the holy angels with Him will also come. Then He will sit on the throne of His glory. So we can see that holy angels are coming down with Him, and He will send His angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Yes. Okay, so there's going to be a trumpet. Well, actually, in the Bible, the trumpets were more like a, a horn that you blow. Okay, so this is... This is a very special sound, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other, and this is what's going to happen. So it's going to be a visible event. Jesus will not come back alone, and it's going to be an audible event. In other words, this is not going to be quiet. So please write this word down. It's an audible event. And how do we know this? Because the Bible says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Oh, okay, listen, I, I hope some of you did not misunderstand me yesterday because I talked to you about how sometimes our churches can become very emotional, right? It's not so much about the truth in the Bible, but sometimes uh, churches can become very emotional. And uh, sometimes you go to the church and people say, well, you have to say, hallelujah, amen, you know? And, and of course, uh, it, it, uh, let, let me just clarify myself because sometimes uh, I also believe we can go into another extreme. Where we come to church and you say amen and everybody's like, amen. <laughs> <sighs> like as if you came to the funeral hall. You know, one day I was a youth pastor in Toronto. And I remember my teenagers, you know, were sitting in the front and we had an exciting worship service. And suddenly it was really good and, uh, and they were just quiet, just sitting there. And one day I took them to the game of Blue Jays, you know, the Blue Jays in Toronto. I said, guys, let's go and play, you know, watch the game. And I was shocked, you know, even the most conservative members of my church, you know, the ones who are very conservative, you know, they are the ones that don't make any noise, they just sit like this. 
But when they got to the game, let me tell you something. They were like, go Blue Jays, go! You know, and I'm sitting there and I'm saying, what is going on? What did these Blue Jays do for you? Yes. That you were so excited. You don't even have a relationship. You don't even know who are the Blue Jays. I said, you know, guys, you know, jokingly, but seriously, I said, you know, guys, shame on us. If we can say, go Blue Jays! And then we come to church and we say, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Come on. You know, I am actually quite passionate about this because my father served in the Soviet military. And you know how sometimes the Soviet military would take you as a soldier? You would have to pass a special test. You know, I kind of shared this with some of my Duncan friends. My, my dad was uh, serving in the Russian Navy there in the Crimea. You know, you heard about Crimea. And so um, he had to be accepted into the, the, the special elite uh, force there where they had to sing in the choir. It was very famous. And so the, the conductor and my dad says, I didn't know what kind of test they would have. He was a pretty good singer, but the commander simply said to him, hey, come. My father's name was John. He says, John, stand here. I want you to sing. Ha! And my dad said, ha! Okay, you're in. You're in the choir. Next guy. Next guy comes. Say ha! Huh! And the next guy will say ha! Huh. Okay, sorry. You are not accepted into the choir. Please, you, you, you do not belong here, okay? I don't want this kind of passion here. And I'm not making this up. This is true story, okay? So if you don't have ha! Huh, don't even come. Alright? Let someone else come. You see, this is how the... That's why sometimes some of these Russian choirs, you see the, you see the guys sing with passion. Even though they're not singing to God, but they're singing with passion, you know? That's why I want to just to say that as Christians, unfortunately, sometimes people look at us and they think, you know what, this is not a church, this is a funeral home. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be part of this. You know, these people are just dying. Mm -hmm. But you know what, even that is not the most important because when we come into the presence of God, it is not so much emotional thing, even though I believe that is important, but I believe it is also what the truth that matters. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you may come to church that may be kind of boring, but you know what? That may be the church that has the truth. Mm -hmm. According to the Bible, the truth is independent of emotions. The truth is simply there, all right? And so as we read the Bible, it says that God will come with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. God loves trumpets. God loves noise. God is not only just the God of, of quietness, He loves noise. And the Bible actually says when He will come, this is going to be an incredible event, and righteous living will be cut up to meet Jesus, okay? This is what happens when Jesus comes down from heaven, there's this, this loud trumpet sound, and the Bible says that the dead will rise, um, and then the righteous living are cut up to meet Jesus. And then it says in 1 Thessalonians, then we who are still alive and remain, we shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We're going to talk more about this on Thursday, about, about the dead and where they are. But it says here, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. This is the most exciting passage, and it's often read at funerals. But it's exciting because all of the saved will be changed. Not just a small group of people, but every Christian who has accepted Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, will be changed. Are you excited about that? Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know about that. I'm, for one thing, I'm looking forward to get my hair back, okay? I'm really looking forward to that. My doctor told me the other day, he says, you know what, you need to be 180 pounds. I said, doctor, I had, a, I was, I had 180 pounds when I was in grade 11, okay? Uh, that was a long time ago. He says, well, you need to lose your weight in order to be healthy. And I'm really taking it seriously, but you know, I am about 245. And for me to go down to 180, I probably will have to eat carrots, Matthew, for the next several months, okay? I'm really looking forward to that, but I'm a little bit scared. I just look forward to the day when suddenly God is going to say, hey, you've got to be 180, just like that. You know, the Bible says that that's what's going to happen, all right? This is what's going to happen. We will be changed. And it's a mystery, okay? The Bible says that when this happens, this is going to be a mystery. So don't, don't, don't ask me to explain to you how this is going to happen. But the Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery that we shall be changed. Yeah. We will be different. Even though we will be what? Looking just like we are. Okay? In, in other words, we will be recognizing each other. Because the Bible says that when Jesus was resurrected, people were able to recognize Him. His voice. They were able to recognize His hands. So when we will be changed, people will recognize us. 
You know, that's why it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at when? Right. At the last trumpet. You see, God loves noise. God loves good music. God loves sometimes to say, Hey, humanity, wake up. You know, I know sometimes we think that God is always quiet. But you know what? As a parent, I live right next to a very busy street. And I have a child who likes to run. And you know, I really talk nice and soft to him. Uh, his name is Isaac, you know. And unfortunately, my boys were not able to come because it's a long trip and everything. And, but hopefully they will be here on Wednesday. And sometimes Isaac likes to run to the road. And you know, as a good father, sometimes I have to raise my voice. I cannot just be quiet. When I see him run to the road, and Wendell, you saw where I live, yeah. sometimes I, say, I have to say, hey Isaac, what are you doing? And you know, our Heavenly Father is doing exactly the same thing in the Bible, but unfortunately, some of us are too complicated. That's why the Bible says you have to become like a child in order to enter the kingdom. Because instead of learning a lesson, we think, oh, why is God yelling at me? Why is he raising his voice? Because sometimes in the Bible, God says, hey, it's like this, hey, hey, enough, enough of this. This is enough. In other words, God says, I am a loving parent, and I want you to know that you need to stop what you're doing because you're going to lose your life. That's a loving father. And in the last days, God is going to come with a noise, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. You see how often the Bible says we will be changed, we will be changed. And of course you're probably asking, well, how is this going to happen again on Thursday? We're going to discover this topic for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. We are going to live forever. Yes. I don't know if you're Amen. excited about this. Amen. I'm just excited. Amen. You know, today we had a memorial service and the wonderful lady that passed away was 104 years old. You know, that's why I'm excited to be here on the island, Wendell. That's why you need to come here, okay? okay? You need to move from Windsor to here. I'll tell you why. Because some of the longest living people in the world live right here on the island, okay? okay. Forget about all the depression that I mentioned and all the prices on the houses, you know? <laughs> Forget about all of that. Because people here, I don't know how, but they live for 104 years. And the person that was giving, um, uh, paying a tribute to the memory of, of this deceased person was 96, okay? I have never seen so people who are even able to drive at this kind of age. We know we have them in Victoria. Do we have them here in Duncan? I think so. Okay, unbelievable. But you know what? Even 100 years is not enough compared to eternity. It's not enough. That's why James Bond was correct. Okay, he said this world is not enough. No matter how long you live, 100 years is nothing compared to a million years. Now imagine that. For this corruptible ones put him in corruption, and I cannot imagine to see my father being resurrected. My father was an awesome guy. Awesome guy, you know? When my father preached a sermon when I was a kid, you know, you could feel that what he was saying was real. You know, he was taller than me. He was that former Soviet soldier. And he told me, man, if you do something, do it with passion. And if you do not have any passion, then don't do it at all. You either go with God all the way or nothing at all. Then stay home. Don't even say you're a Christian, all right? That was my dad. I miss him. Man, I miss him. He passed away in 2005. Had a brain tumor. And in his last few months of his life, he forgot everything. He, he forgot where he was or where he lived. One day he even forgot my name. Mm. Because the brain tumor was affecting his ability to, to speak and comprehend. But even when he forgot his name, my name, he was sitting on his bed looking out the window. And uh, I remember him saying, Jesus, come. Mm. You know, Jesus, he never forgot the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's why I know when the resurrection day will come, it's not going to be secretive. It is not going to be quiet. It is going to be the most awesome event. And I know that my father went through tribulations in the, in the communist country, and I am inspired not to be praying to God, God, take me away from the tribulations, but I will say, Lord, Help me to go through, through the tribulation that even my sons can be inspired to follow you so that they, they can know 
that you are real, mm -hmm. all right? This is how our children know that we are real if we go through tribulations. You know, you may be going through something difficult. Maybe it's, maybe it's a very difficult illness. But I want you to know that God can turn that negative into positive. Mm -hmm. And someone is going to be blessed. And only Heavenly Father can do that. Because we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We look forward to Him. The Bible says, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto His glorious body. You see how often the Bible says... Now, I don't like to read this one because this kind of scares me a little bit, you know. The Bible says that there will be uh, a righteous living will be cut up to meet Jesus. Then all of us will be changed. And then there will be a great, what? Earthquake. Now, I don't like earthquakes, all right? But listen to what it says. The heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and... Island. Uh-oh. <laughs> Where do we live? Island. We live on the island, okay? Every mountain and island were moved out of their place. But you know, I believe this verse is already after the fact when we will be cut up in heaven. That's when we, all of us, as Christians, those of you who accept Christ as your Savior, we will be cut up. So we, we know that because the Bible says those of us who are still alive will be cut up. So we may not. And I believe, I don't, I don't believe I'm going to die in some, uh, on the island and then to be resurrected again. Maybe that will happen. But you know what? We as Christians are not afraid. We're not afraid to live on the island because we know that we have nothing to be afraid because our Jesus Christ is going to change our body. We're going to be different. And the kings of the earth and the great man and the rich man and the mighty man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne. For the great day of his breath has come and who shall be able to stand? And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings and there was a great earthquake. There it is. You see, the Bible several times says that there's going to be an earthquake. And such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. As you can see that. So this is going to be something big. And here's, I'm going to show you this earthquake that happened in Italy. Just, uh, was it last year? I believe last year that uh, this earthquake happened in Italy. Now, as I told you, Italy is close to my heart because I love to be in Italy. And I sometimes uh, drive through these little towns in the mountains. Let me tell you something. I know you think you have big mountains, but if you haven't been to Italy, trust me, it's just amazing. Um, uh, Italy has so many big mountains, beautiful the little towns, and this is what happened just, uh, I believe, last year, and terrible earthquake, and the Bible actually says that this earthquake, when Jesus comes, is going to be much, much greater. It's going to be something that I don't think anyone will be able to survive. All tribes of the earth will mourn, the Bible says, and, uh, but not everyone. Because the Bible says that there will be a group of people that will be happy to see him come. Mm -hmm. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. And listen carefully because it says, and to stand before the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. So that is what the Bible says, that if we do escape at the end of the world, escape death and destruction, it will be for all of us, not just some special group of people, all of us. All of us together, even with those who have fallen asleep, we will meet the Lord together, according to the Bible. So let's just quickly review at the end of this presentation. False prophets in Christ will try to deceive everyone. Remember from yesterday? Is that true? That's happening already. The devil will try to impersonate an angel of light. We haven't covered this, but the Bible says that this is what's going to happen. The devil doesn't come with horns and hoofs. He's going to come as the angel of light. And, um, and furthermore, the second coming will not be secret. Do you agree with this based on Bible verses? It is not going to be secret, folks. It is going to be very loud. Every eye will see Jesus coming, and the holy angels will come with Jesus, and he will come with a blast of a trumpet, and he will come with a shout of the archangel, all right? And the righteous dead will be resurrected. You see how everything is outlined in the Bible. We should not be confused. And then the righteous living will be translated without seeing death. Okay, that's what the Bible says. And all the righteous will be given immortality. And this is, we'll discuss more on Thursday, but this is what happens. And finally, all of earth's ungodly people will mourn when they see Jesus. And a great earthquake will destroy the earth. And finally, all sinners, people who have never accepted God, denied Him over and over again will cease to exist. And we'll talk that more about on Wednesday and Thursday again. But friends, 
I don't know about you, but that book of Isaiah says, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for Him, and He will save us. Do you believe this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I, wanna, I want you to know that we, we covered several major prophecies. You know, if all the prophecies have been fulfilled, and this is the last thing that we are sti has still not been fulfilled, if all the other prophecies have been fulfilled, then what is the percentage of uh, reality when it comes to this final point? Do you think it's going to happen? Yes. I believe it's going to happen, you know? And the Bible says, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, I look forward to that day, friends. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we are going to be changed and going to be with God forever. So write this down. God's kingdom reigns. God's kingdom is going to reign. I cannot imagine. You know, these are artists that are trying to portray what heaven will look like. But you know, the Bible says no eye or ear has heard of the things that are waiting for us. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, I tell you, it is so true because um, uh, we cannot even imagine of what heaven is going to be like. But then it says, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. God says that there is a kingdom that is going to, there's a place for us. And I want to end this presentation with just a story. You know, I lived in many places. I lived in Toronto. I lived in Moscow. I lived in, uh, in, uh, in Germany. Uh, I'm just forgetting the, the, the city in Germany, right next to Frankfurt. I lived in, uh, uh, in, in Edmonton. I lived, in, uh, I lived a little bit well, right now in British Columbia. I've lived in many different places. And you know what is said? When I go to Toronto, sometimes me and my wife, as we drive on the young street, we look there and we say, hey, you see that house, that apartment? That's where we used to live. And you know, sometimes we say, well, that is amazing because I wonder who lives there now? <laughs> and one day as we were saying this, you know, tears came to my eyes because I realized that those houses where I lived, they do not have my name engraved anywhere there. But I know that there is a place in heaven that is waiting for me, yeah. where my name has permanent address. Mm -hmm. I no longer have to be moving from one place to the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look forward to the day. I don't know what you're going through right now in your life, but you know, there's a song that I would like to sing. I got so jealous with Matt, uh, Matthew, I got jealous for, for you, because you sang with Wendell, you know, that, I, and I said, you know what, that is not right, because today, <laughs> You sang with Wendell, I'm going to sing with Wendell, you know, because I think Wendell is going to make me just sound much better than what, what I can sing, okay? So Wendell, I would like you, there's a microphone, Wendell, if you can just take, I'm going to sing this song with Wendell for you and with you. So you, you can join us, okay? Because you're going to see the words on the screen, and I'm going to make sure that the volume is here so that our sound men are going to do a, you know, a good job. By the way, have you enjoyed our sound men? Have they, have they been doing a good job? Let's give them a hand of applause for our sound men here. They're sitting so nicely, and you know, there's a lot of things that they have to do here. So the song that I'm going to play to you simply says this. There is no problem too big. God cannot solve it. I don't know what you're going through, but just keep your eyes on the prize. Because God says, even if you suffer, you are still rich. Because your father is the king of the universe. Just think of that. So here's the song. There is no problem. Thank you, Wendell. Thank you. It's a privilege to sing with you, my friend. See, we're not going to just let you go easily like this. We're going to squeeze every minute out of you here. There is no problem to be. God cannot solve it. There is no mountain to tall. God cannot move. No storm so dark, God cannot come in. There is no sorrow to deep, He cannot soothe it. If He carried the weight of the world upon His shoulders, I know my brother. I know my 
that even though we may be going through tribulations and trials, we can still have joy and peace. Lord, I thank you that you have reminded us, reminded us of that. Because we are not afraid. We are not afraid to go through, through tribulations. As a matter of fact, Lord, I, I have a feeling that there are some people here in this room that are going through some big challenges in their life. And Lord, I pray just like, just like here in the Bible, it says, Lord, I pray that you do not take them out of the world, but that the evil one will not hurt them. And specifically, Lord, I just pray that Satan and his angels will not discourage anyone here from falling away, from believing in you and having a relationship with you. Lord, help us all. Help us all to come closer to you. I know you're calling us. And maybe there's even somebody here who has not been really close to you for years already and you're calling them to come back maybe someone else is simply you're saying it's time for you to embrace the truth just the way it is presented in the bible lord i pray for everyone here and now i simply say give us traveling mercies as we go back home and for wendell as he flies back to ontario may we see each other again and if not on this planet lord we pray that we will see each other in your kingdom I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you, friends. Remember, please, uh, I know we haven't, uh, we know we, we had the cards and we had the little tickets for you. But you know what? Today we are simply going to relax. Is that okay? We're going to just relax. And some of you, uh, or do we have some gifts? Do we have some gifts? Just to, Matthew, you know what? We can't just let people go. We have three gifts. Let's do that right now. Okay, so Arlene, you have all those numbers. Before you leave, somebody's going to get some nice gifts from us today, tonight. So um, have we collected these numbers? 
Not yet. Okay. We oh, we have them. We have them. Okay. We have Daniel Meeks. He's going to do okay. the draw for us. Yeah, Matthew, you have the microphone right there. So Daniel Meeks, come on up. Come on up. Daniel Meeks. This is this is the yeah, this is a future pastor right here. Okay. So he's gonna mix it up. Okay. So pull just one ticket. Daniel, go ahead. Man, with a name like this, man, I tell you, man. With a name like Daniel, you can go places, man. And he's meek. Right. Last three numbers. Last three numbers. Three two nine. Anybody three two nine? Yes. Oh. Let's give them a hand of applause. Yes, today you're gonna get a special book called Des Ages. Desire of Ages. Thank you so much. May, may you be blessed with this book as it describes the life of Jesus Christ based on the Bible. Okay, let's let's put this number on the side so we don't mix it up with everybody else. Mix it up, Daniel. Let's see what you have. And the next number is all right. The last three numbers. Go ahead. Three, three, four. Three, three, four. Okay, if you have this number, just come up and you we're going to give you another book. What book is that, Matthew? What book is that? We're going to give the book uh, Messiah. Messiah, okay. So three, three, four. Going once, going twice. All right, going three times. All right, maybe you lost the ticket. Okay, pull, let's pull another number, okay? So let's put this to the side. Okay, what's the other ticket? All right, very quickly. Read this. All right, this is the same number. Three. So... You know, that's why you don't have a ticket, because both of them are right here, all right. That was just a mistake, okay? Well, let's let's get another ticket. Yeah, even Daniel was surprised. Okay, so here, three last numbers. 315. 315, folks, 315. Anybody here with 315? 315, all right, again, maybe somebody else, again, put the two oh. tickets right here. Oh, there it is, all right. All right, thank you, thank you, and there is a special book for you. Let's give the hand of applause, thank you. Absolutely, I'm so glad that we, and one more gift, one, one, more, more, gift, one more gift, the ultimate gift, which is the Word of God, okay? So Daniel, come on, let's pull another Number ticket. So, the last three numbers. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. You're going to go home, and please don't read the Bible and drive at the same time, because that is not good, all right? Even, well, the angels can save you, but don't push the limit, okay? So, three, two, one is the number, going once, going twice, and... Three, two, one, nobody, take a look, take a look, I know it's a little bit dark, three, two, one, nobody, okay, so Daniel, one more time, one more time, okay, this, so that means this Bible was meant to go to someone else, all right, so let's see, let's see what you have, number is, go ahead, 318, 318, 318, 318, 318, going once, going twice, Two and a half. There it is. Yes. Come on up. Let's give him a round of applause. He was waiting to the very end. Very good. So thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Let's let's also say amen to Daniel for helping us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I better check that number. Yes, that's a good number. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Friends, God bless you. Have a wonderful, safe trip. No meetings tomorrow or Tuesday, but let's see you on Wednesday night. And the topic will be suffering. What does the Bible say? God bless you.